My friends, will you pray with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable unto you, my God, and your strength and my redeemer. Amen. 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 So, this month, actually this summer, this month and next month, we're exploring some of the lesser known characters of the Bible. Now, they all had an impact on the major characters that we all know. Okay? So, we're going to talk about some of these minor characters and the roles that they took. Now, how many of you, got to be honest, how many of you know the name of Caleb? A few. A few. That's cool. That's cool. Now, if I quizzed, we could probably get the number down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, Caleb traveled with Moses and the Hebrews who had who'd left Egypt and traveled the desert en route to the Promised Land. Now, presumably, Caleb had been born during the trek, since he was probably younger than 40. And even if he had come out of Egypt with the escaped slaves, he was most likely a child when they left Egypt. So he would have grown up during the trip. And when the promised land was in sight, Moses sent Caleb and some other scouts to check out the area. We're going to check it out. See if it's safe. See if we can actually do what we're called to do. Now, in this morning's reading, which is from the book of Numbers, Caleb is the only named person on the team. Caleb and some other guys went and checked it out. Now, the same story is also in the book of Joshua. Guess who the other named person is? <laughs> Joshua. Joshua, very good. Okay. He's also named <coughs> as one of the leaders there. But in both versions, when these spies, and that's what they were, right? When these spies are ready to return, most of them had checked it out and had said, it's too dangerous. It's too dangerous. And maybe we should find a different place to cross into the promised land. You know, a safer place. Let's go to a place where there aren't any big cities. Let's go to a place where maybe there's just goats on the hills. <laughs> Let's do that. But Caleb and Joshua advocate for this place. And they say, we can attack. We can win. And in the end, these two, these two, are the only people who were born in Egypt who are allowed to enter the cross. Because Caleb advocated for risk. Chance of winning, yeah. And he looked at it and he said, yeah, there's a good chance we can win. But, so he advocated for risk over just safety, right? But he also advocated for following the instructions that Moses had received from God. The instructions had said, cross the river here. Cross the river here. And attack a city that you may be familiar with. Let's see. Joshua fit the battle of Jericho. Jericho. Okay. Jericho. Go and attack Jericho. So here's the question. Are you Caleb? Are you Caleb? Are you willing to take a risk? Of course, Caleb knew what the risk was, right? He checked it out personally. He had been there. He had talked to people, and, and apparently he figured that the possible result was worth the risk. Or are you one of the 12 other spies who said, Moses, don't go in there. It's not worth the risk. Which are you? 
Are you willing to step out or are you willing, less willing to step out and more likely to just say, not going to do it. The Caleb's among us take chances when the possibility of gain is great. Okay. We don't know if, if Caleb would have advised attack if the opposition was very, very strong, if it was obvious to him that there was no way, which it seems to have been for the other people. And we don't know what he might have advised if he had seen that, that the enemy had a lot of allies. But we do know that he took the chance. Well, you know, I'm not actually sure that he took a chance. Because the chance he took was to advise the Hebrews as a whole to take a chance. Advise everybody to take a chance. And some of us aren't Caleb even then. You know, we don't want to be, be the person known who suggested the mistake. So we stay back. We stay back. We don't say, you know what, we should, and I will be part of it. Don't do that. Sometimes we say, you know, <clears throat> you should. <laughs> you know, so for me, the message of Caleb is that we are called to take a chance now and then. You know? But in taking the chance, or advising that a chance be taken, we need to do our homework. We need to scout. So, you know, if you want to buy a new house, you probably need to look at your finances. Um, maybe have, have the house checked out. You, know, you need to look at your job situation and make sure that you really think it's pretty stable. You, know, you need to do all of those things. If you want to run for the board of directors, you need to weigh the differences between your own abilities and the abilities of others, as well as time available and egos, <coughs> and egos. We need to take chances, my friends. We need to take chances, but they need to be measured chances. You know, we just don't run in. We need to take measured chances. So, so this week, put on your Caleb gear. I suppose it would be a long robe and a beard. Put on your Caleb gear and find a chance to take. Find a chance to take. Go to that restaurant that has food that you're not sure you're going to like and try it. Walk up to somebody and say hello. Um, try using um, a power tool that you've never used before. Yeah. Yeah, we can find that. <laughs> <laughs> depends, upon, depends upon your definition of power tool. There you go. <laughs> it could be a drill. It could be an electric mixer, you know? <laughs> it could be a dust buster. I mean, you know, try something that you haven't tried. <laughs> but look at it. Look at the odds. You know, what are my odds of success? Is it worth it to me to do the work that is necessary? And if it's not for that particular chance, find another chance. Find another chance. Take a chance. Because I can tell you that the odds of success are much greater than stopping at the gas station and buying a Powerball ticket. Amen? Amen. <laughs> <laughs>